Hello and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I have an amazing person named Jamie Quinn with me today, and she is a certified hypnotherapist specializing in trauma, PTSD, as well as a skilled nutrition coach. And we've had a conversation already in terms of the trauma, PTSD, and the connection there. And I wanted to have her back to chat a little bit more about the nutrition side because it gets missed so often in the healing process that we have in our lives. So thanks for chatting with me some more, Jamie. I appreciate it. Yes, thanks for having me back. You bet. So we touched on a little bit of your story and I'm going to recap it super simply and not serve it justice, I'm sure. But you had some definite trauma in your childhood. Your mom was attacked and survived by a serial killer. She was attacked by a serial killer in your bathroom, in your home, actually on a holiday. Yes? No? Yes, 4th of July. And we had been at a camp out. We had been lighting off fireworks and it was dark. It was late at night. We're talking years ago. And my mom went to the bathroom and the next thing I knew, I was watching her scream. I could hear her screaming and yeah, within minutes people were running and dogs barking and then the next thing I remember is the blue and red lights and just all this stuff. But when I saw my mom being helped from the bathroom, I actually didn't recognize her as my mother. And she She was being helped out and she had her hands covering her face and she was screaming so loud and so strange. I think that that was actually the first time I ever had a dissociative experience because I could see that it was her, but the sounds were not her and I couldn't understand it in my mind as an eight-year-old what was going on. And I remember later asking my brother who that woman was. And he was saying, that's mom. In my mind, I could not picture the pieces together, how it could look like her, but not sound like her. And I also remember thinking somebody burned her. That's what it had to be. Somebody burned her with firework. And that's why she sounds like that. And they must have put them in her pants. And that's what I was remembering as a child is that they burned her so bad. And yeah, I think that that was a dissociative experience for me not being able to see that it was her, if that makes any sense. It makes absolute sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that was so far from the version of the person that was your mom that it I could see how it wouldn't make sense at all. Our brains at that point are still putting things together and it's just like, okay, that one. And also I can imagine in that moment, your subconscious stepped in and said, oh, we need to separate this instance. We need to protect you. So the first thing it's going to do is step in and find an instant way to try and protect you in that moment. I could see how that would happen. I think maybe my mind thought that it would be better that she was burned than somebody attacking her in the bathroom. Yeah, that wouldn't even come to your mind as the possibility at that age as something that happened. Did you find out right after that that she had been attacked or did she tell you later? I guess I never asked that question. It seemed that we were just whisked away and put into a car and nobody came to talk to us about what was happening. And I just sat and watched figures running and I can just remember shadows and that Fourth of July has never been the same. I bet it hasn't. That's got to be quite the association with that. And most of my life, I've had a problem with very loud noises and loud motorcycles or really loud music or just any kind of bang. And I think it's related to it. Now, actually, this has been so much better since I went through hypnotherapy. If I was around a sudden loud experience, I would get jolt of pain through my body. And I actually tried to get help for that. And I 
I would ask my doctor or a counselor. I have this thing that happens to me with loud noises and they kind of look at you like, what? And never mind. I'm just a weirdo. But I never realized that those loud noises were like dolts of adrenaline from that night. And actually that has cleared up and it feels so good that something can go by me, a really loud motorcycle, and I'm not cringy. I bet. Oh my goodness. That probably is like, oh, what a relief. And so you shared with me too, and I hope it's okay to share this, that after that incident with your mom, you guys went and stayed, you and your brother and you, or your mom, your brother and you, you went and stayed in a motel and she basically sequestered herself. And you guys were kind of outside of that, outside the room for the majority of the day and the time. And a little bit of your association with food kind of came into play with that part there. Yes, my mom was a wreck and she wasn't the most stable person to begin with. And I would wait for her to open up the motel door just to beg for food. And I specifically remember one incident where she told me that she was going to make some soup in the hotel room and my favorite soup too, vegetable beef soup. And I waited all day for her to open that door. And when she finally did, I said, where's the soup? Where's the soup? And she said, I burnt it. I had to flush it down the toilet in the hotel room. And I said, no, no, I love burnt soup. Really, I love burnt soup. I will eat it. And she said, no, I'll make something later. And I just remember just like collapsing almost inside about she threw it away. I would have eaten that. So it's not important to her at that time. No, because she was unfortunately in the throes of her own trauma and not functioning. As you said, maybe not in the best realm of parenthood to begin with. And so that didn't actually help the situation. But then at that moment, I think, I don't know about before, but during that particular time, I'm sure it got anchored into you of the scarcity of food. Your natural, like, oh my gosh, I need to eat inside your body. That little part of you must have really been in high gear. Yes. And my mom reached a point that she couldn't feed us and she couldn't take care of us. So she put my brother and I on a bus, a six hour bus trip for my father to get us. And she gave my brother and I each those little bags of donuts. They come in, you know, like chocolate or the white powder. I don't know, like you get six or eight of them in there. And she put us on the bus and she said, don't get off this bus until you see your father. And I was petrified. I was so scared. And the bus made several stops. And I held on to that thing of donuts. And when I finally saw my father and my stepmother, they got us, they put us in the car and I ripped open those donuts. I wanted to eat so bad and I had not eaten. And I don't know how long my stepmother grabbed the donuts. She threw them away and she said, you're not going to eat that junk food before dinner. And it was another two hours back to my father's house. And I remember that. And I was just a small child and she did not know. My stepmom did not know that I hadn't eaten in for so long. I told her later as an adult and she felt horrible. But when I got to my father's cabin, it was on 88 acres in the woods. They had food on the shelf. So it was just a two room cabin that my father built. We had no running water, no electricity, but we had, I still have the kerosene lantern we used to light the, the cabin up at night, but lined on the shelves were all kinds of soups and cereals. And as a child, I stood looking at all that food on the wall and thinking, I am never going to go hungry again. And I wonder which one we get to eat first. Wow. Oh my goodness. So you had adults all over the place kind of messing up your little associations <laughs> with food. <laughs> So that showed up for you throughout your life and is something that you really focus on now in the healing process for yourself and for others because so many people miss the connection, I think, in nutrition and how important it can be to our mental health, to our, our physical health, but to our mental and spiritual health as well. When we're not feeding our body, we're not producing all the things that our brain needs in order to function properly. We're not able to think in the way that we need to. All of those little things are kind of going on. And in that, I think also our body is not working in the way we want. When we have our mind and our body not in a good place, we got to know our spirit's not feeling very good about things that we're not able to do that we want to do. And so our energy at that level is not going to be flowing in the way we want it to. So I think it's super key that we do that. So then you, with all of the trauma that happened to you and all of those things that happened to you, throughout 
throughout life, you ended up with some other issues, ended up with chronic constipation, obviously a little bit of a relation to going to the bathroom as being scary, having your mother attacked in a bathroom. I could see how that connection is there. Well, you didn't make it. And then also you call it a comfort mechanism. You worked at home for 25 plus years because you didn't want to go out. You didn't want to be in the world. That was too scary. Another part of the trauma experience for you. But what was your relationship with food during those years? Oh, well, I was the best cook. I stocked up on food. I could afford food and I made Betty Crocker look weak. (laughs) I mean, I could cook. I could make the best cookies and pies and cakes. Everybody loved to come to my house to eat. And I was just fixing all the great things and eating just to probably shove down my emotions and not have to deal with any of that. Looking back on it now, if I had known everything now, I would not have brought all the sugars and stuff into the house because I didn't realize then what I was doing to my own children. Yeah, I know. I think about that a lot now. I didn't realize so much with my kids either. I realized with my grandkids, but sometimes it's hard because we think so often of sweets as treats to give your kids, to give even my grandkids. And he's figured that out. He's two, but he's figured that out already because... I have given him a treat here and there or a special something. And then he's like, and so I try to find other things to give him little treats on and find different ways. And that's interesting. But there is quite the association of that. It's hard to break for me. because That was how I grew up, too. But Mm -hmm. I put a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, I think, generationally. My daughter's way better at it than I am, thankfully. So I did something. I did something. Right. And so is my son. And so they're kind of passing that on along a little bit better than I did. But when you were in that process, did you decide once you realized that you wanted to start healing, you had a moment where everything kind of changed for you and you knew you needed help with the way that things were going for you with that trauma that was in your life. Did that at that point involve nutrition or did that kind of come later? Because I know we talked a little bit in the other one about you went in and you searched for the therapies and thankfully found hypnosis. And that one made a difference for you in clearing the traumas and especially going into the PTSD trauma part of it and doing that particular protocol, the six-week protocol, doing that cleared it for you. Nutrition came in where? Nutrition came in, I would say, probably second. So I started with actually exercise and I started exercising a lot and I'm thinking that I'm going to outrun my fork. And it's just an impossible scenario. I wanted to lose weight, but I did not want to give up all the yummy things that I wanted to eat as well. And so I started out by going to a yoga class. And this is a funny story, actually. I was super overweight. I hurt my back and I thought to myself, okay, I've got to lose weight and get fit or I'm going to have to find a different career. I can't work. My back is so bad. So I signed up to go to a hot yoga class on my birthday and I got brand new sweatpants and a sweatshirt and I got a Walmart yoga mat and I was like, yeah, here I go. And I had never been to a hot yoga class before. And I don't know if you know what happens when it starts getting hot in there and your clothes get wet and then they start sagging. So you do not wear sweats to a hot yoga class. And so the neck piece is now so wet and sagging down it. You know, it looks like I have a V-neck. My pants were so wet. When I'm in downward dog, I'm trying to hold on to my shirt and my pants at the same time. So my shirt doesn't fall off over my head. My pants don't fall down. And then I'm trying to alternate in between hands because my hand can only stand so much pressure for so long being overweight and not doing yoga. It was just a nightmare. Let me tell you, I did not give up. I went back and back and back to that class and I went back so many times that I eventually couldn't even afford it. It was just so costly that I had to quit that and I was invited to go to a gym and do yoga there and I could afford that because it's a fixed price and then I met people there and they're, oh, come on, do Pilates and come on, let's do some spin class. I started meeting these people and I started venturing out a little more to the point where I was doing two classes a day just so I could continue to eat the foods that I wanted to eat and I would go do a evening class and go back home, get a Hershey bar, get my pajamas and jump in bed and watch Law and Order. Well, one night I did that whole routine and I woke up at two in the morning clutching my Hershey bar and it was just melted all over my hand and on my pajamas. It looked like I had pooped the bed. You know, it was just terrible. And I kind of thought you really have a problem. You're not losing any weight and you really have a problem if you're going to wake up with a Hershey bar melted all over you at bed. 
right? So the nutrition part, unfortunately, came last. And that is because I think it brought me so much comfort from the past. And so as I dealt more with the mind part and then dove into nutrition, I could kind of see that the more you fed your body the nutrients it needed, the more energy you were going to have and the less likely you were going to rely on that comfort food. I have to say that was one of my very first ventures into health was exercise as well. I got exercise more and everything. And I remember specifically, you happen to be like assigned a little coach to help you along the way when you were doing this particular thing. And I did this and he was asking me about my nutrition. And I said, well, I'm still having my wine because at that point I was drinking wine and I made it a little joke. Well, I still treat myself to some wine or a couple glasses of wine or something. And I remember him saying, if you want it to make a difference, you're going to have to give that up. But I was like, I'm going to give that up. And I didn't for a long time and tell I really needed it to make a difference. And once I really got to that point of like, well, if you're going to do this, then do it and see what happens. See if it makes a difference. And it did. It made a big difference to shift the nutrition. And your body, my body just felt better. I didn't have the sugar or at that point, the alcohol that you have the next day that brings all the cravings back up. Sugar's my thing. I do struggle with sugar. And that's a little bit of a mental thing for me, kind of going back to my childhood too, of scarcity and not enough because I was told no a lot. And so now it's like, I'm a grown up and I can say yes if I want to. So I overdid and would say yes all the time just because. But now I know it's like, well, you don't have to say yes every time. You don't even have to finish everything on your plate. It's magic that way where you get to decide now. But it's a process and you don't realize how key nutrition is in everything that you do. It is. And what I would like the people to realize is we're either going to pay it now or you're going to pay it later. And so you can pay it now and be good and try to eat healthy and really go that route or you can indulge in everything you want but bottom line you're going to pay for it later so if you pay it now you're going to feel good while you're doing it but if you pay it later it's going to be a lot harder that's where you're getting into diabetes high blood pressure and heart disease alzheimer's dementia is all coming out to be sugar related and one of the scary things as we get older i'm 57 now and i have diabetes and heart disease that runs rampant in my family and I feel like I'm just starting to live. And that is why nutrition is so important to me now is so I want that longevity and I want to feel good going into the future. And I want to feel good when I hit that trail next week. And so that's so important to me. And having a big why is definitely going to help you reach your goals sooner if you always remember that why. And I don't want to be struggling with heart disease and diabetes. No, and you've used the work that you do now, having found hypnosis and mindset and all of the things that are there, you use that to help you with that, to help balance yourself out and to help other people to move beyond the willpower issues, correct? Yes. So I have a year long program that I help people with. And we start off with doing hypnotherapy because it starts in the mind first. And we need to get to those seed stories, get to the belief shifts and changing your thoughts around the stories you've been telling yourself. And then as we move into nutrition and we start talking about how to fuel your body properly, you start feeling better, which then is going to propel you towards the movement part and the exercise part. So it's starts in the mind, then it goes to nutrition, and then the exercise. And it doesn't have to stay like that, you know, hardcore, but that's pretty much if we don't deal with the mind first, you're just going to end up yo-yo dieting. You know what to do. You know how to eat. We know we should be eating our vegetables, yet why can't we make that happen? And I know so many people ask themselves that. I actually literally was speaking with someone a couple hours ago who was reaching out to me and they are, a, I forget exactly, but like a certified nutritionist. I mean, somebody who does nutrition in their work. And she's struggling with binge eating. She's struggling with eating outside of the scope of where she wants to be eating. And she's like, I used to be able to manage it and be able to say no to it here or 
were there. And she also had some sensitivities that she needed to avoid. And she was telling me how now she just does it. It doesn't matter that she knows that she's not supposed to. It doesn't matter. And she started talking to me a little bit about some of her life and some of the things she's been through. And she very much has some real difficulties and some traumas that are there in her life. And I'm not sure she's made the association. I think she maybe is just starting to. She's having some struggles because of some of the things. Unfortunately, even though we see a lot of the things in our own life, there's things that we don't remember, things that we don't see that might go even further back. That could be when you're a year old. That could be when you're a teeny baby. I know I've heard of people remembering when they were six, eight months old and something that happened then that all of a sudden, once they come into that awareness of it, they have all of that cleared. And then they're able to make the right choices, to do the right thing for themselves. And if they need the encouragement and the boosting and the knowledge at that point, I think it's great that you're there. I think that's a wonderful process that you have to do the hypnotherapy, to get the mind right, to clear the way so that when you start out, open the gates and have everything cleared so that you can move forward in a way without the obstacles, without the beating your head against a wall and not able to do the things and feeling bad about yourself because you're constantly in that yo-yo or in that failure mode and the shame and all the fun stuff that comes with that. Yep. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? And so when you clear that up, it's definitely going to help propel you into the nutrition. And in the program that I use, I have an app. And so I can see everything that you're eating, everything that you're drinking, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or I could say everything you're not eating. And I can counsel you because on a daily basis, weekly basis, I can go over your food and see that. And so we can make adjustments because if you're not sleeping, if you're cranky, if you have low energy, all that is going to be related to your food. And so when you eat properly, all your hormonal symptoms are going to be, and when I say hormonal symptoms, I mean the eat, sleep, that energy is going to come into balance. And so that's why it's key to have somebody go look over what your nutrition is. And then we can move into the exercise part of it, which might be just walking in the beginning. And that's going to be a low stressor on your body. And I recommend and walking for everybody because it does not fire your metabolism. So people that want to start working out or dieting, they feel like they got to go to the gym and start crushing all these workouts and doing HIIT training and lifting weights. And what they don't understand, if they don't have their nutrition on board first, it's just going to make them eat back the calories they just burnt because your metabolism is going to demand payback. So if you don't have that under control first with your nutrition, you are just going to overeat because you've just did all this crazy workout and then your body is going to be like, where's our payment? So walking, you'll run right under the radar of your metabolism with no payback. And it is more of a fat burning exercise. It's actually, they call it neat. That's cool. I love that you're able to give such in-depth support to people because sometimes we really need that. When you're starting a new journey and you're moving in that, I love that. That's why I do mentoring as well in a slightly different way than you do. But I think having someone next to you to walk with you along the way really kickstarts that whole new life that you're wanting. And it makes such a difference because you can say, make the little adjustment here. Let's tweak that there. Hey, how are you feeling emotionally today? What's going on? You have that full support system. I didn't know you did it for that long. And I think that's amazing. I think that's yeah. great. I just had a message from somebody. They've been in my program for two months and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. I had no idea that my life could be this way. And so it was like, that's totally worth it. That's why we do it, right? That yes. right there is why we do it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. That was really insightful. And I appreciate that you were willing to have this conversation with me, Jamie. So if you don't mind, tell people where they can find you and hop onto that amazing new program that's going to be there, that year long program. Yeah, quinnhypnotherapy.com. And you can find me on Instagram as well at quinnhypnotherapy or on Facebook, the same quinnhypnotherapy. Thank you. All that will be in the show notes. So you can go and click on the links there and hop on over and get in touch with with Jamie, have a conversation with her and change your life forever. So I think that would be fun. Thanks for being here, Jamie. Thank you. All right, Change Gang. I hope you have a great one. I hope you move into the week in a wonderful way. And I hope to meet you same time right here next week. Ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, hey, find someone to share it with. 
Maybe they need to hear it too. Or maybe they'll just enjoy it. If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, happy day.